I brought what we agreed. Here's a photograph of the fuel depot. Fantastic, Mike. Let's see what you've got there. This is incredible. Those pigs have been storing thousands of gallons of fuel, and all within our reach. With your ID, all we have to do is go into the compound, say hello, boys, and bring it all back here. You've just made me very, very happy, dude. I knew I wasn't wrong about you. Now you have to hold up your end of the bargain. Yes, of course I will, Mike. You know I'm a man of my word. Besides, these are hard times, and we have to help one another, dude. I'll get Rod and his wife out of their trailer, so you can have a little time alone with the boy. You have my word, and my complete discretion. But remember that you promised that we'd do it my way, quietly and with no violence. I don't want anybody getting hurt. I just need your men to distract his parents on some pretext for long enough for me to slip in there, okay? Of course, Mike. You have my word that we'll only do what's necessary. Only what's strictly necessary. Give me a few minutes and then go to the trailer. Everything will be fine when you get there. Okay, but before I go, can I ask you for something else? Today you've been the bearer of the best possible news, dude. So shoot, I'll see what I can do. I need an electric generator urgently. Hey, hey, dude, calm down. I think you misinterpreted my offer. Since the Great Wave, a generator has become worth more than the lives of a hundred people in this camp. Don't think I couldn't get you one, but the price will be so high that I can't imagine how you'd be able to pay me. I'm sorry, Mike. But I just gave you access to thousands of gallons of fuel. But those barrels aren't walking out of that place on their own. My men and I are going to have to risk our hides by going into the lion's den. I'm sorry, but the matter is closed. Some soldiers murdered a friend of mine in the sewers. I need you to take care of her body. Well, 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 murdered in the sewers. And what the hell was your friend doing there? Wait, don't answer. I've heard about that custom among some relatives of the sick. It means she was hiding a dissolved in the sewers. Or am I mistaken? Yes, you're absolutely, totally, and completely wrong. I'm not going to tell you what she was doing there. About her commitment to learning the truth, to changing things in the shithole left behind by the great wave, where you move around like a fish in water. You'd be incapable of understanding it. You couldn't even imagine making a sacrifice like that. Even I have a hard time imagining it. It's none of your business. Listen, Mike, you know what I think of those disease carriers and of the people who hide them. For everyone's sake, they all belong in the hands of the cleanup brigades. But you know what? Your intentions are good, giving a friend a decent burial. You're loyal to your friends, and I like that. Above all, you've got to be faithful. Loyalty is everything in this new world. So consider it done. I'll take care of it, dude. Her body is in the sewer tunnel that comes out by the entrance to the camp. Your friend will have a decent resting place. I give you my word. You should be going now. I've got to get the trailer sorted out. Give me a few minutes and then you can go there, okay? Adios, dude. Wait a minute. What's that noise? Why is everyone fleeing? What's going on? The cleanup brigades are coming. And they're heading for Rod's trailer. God damn it! The hunters turned them in! That animal turns Colin and his family in! No, he's not sick. It's a mistake. Don't take him away. It's all a misunderstanding. It's just a question of minutes before those bastards break into the trailer and take the boy. Okay, I've got to act fast. The noise the ambulance makes will cover the sound of the glass breaking. <laughs> Colin, in spite of the noise I made breaking the glass and the ambulance's deafening siren, little Colin seems to be asleep or in a trance.
Michael? Michael, is that you? Yes, Colin. It's me. But how do you know my name? Emily told me a lot about you. That's how I know you. She gave me a message. She said it was very important that I give it to you. What's all that noise outside, Michael? Where are my parents? It's, it's nothing, Colin. Your parents will be back very soon. Don't worry. But it's impossible for you to have spoken to Emily. She... she's no longer with us. Yes. Yes, she is. Emily is always with me. When I go down the underground highways, she's there, waiting for me. Emily gave me a message, Michael. She told me it was something very, very important. You say that Emily takes care of you? But how is that possible? She protects me. She keeps me from feeling scared. Because I used to be really scared. I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't understand anything. But now with Emily by my side, everything is much better. She tells me that what's happening to me is normal. That I'm just sick. But that the sickness will go away soon. And that the pain will go away for good then. That she also got really scared when she got sick. Emily told you that she also got sick? Yes, she told me that she went through this before me. That a while back she got the same sickness I have. She told me that she felt very lonely too. And that the pain was unbearable. But that it finally ended. And that's why I shouldn't worry. That the pain and the fear will go away. She's very kind to me, Michael. She's very kind to everybody, isn't she? Yes, Colin. Yes, she is. Emily contracted the same disease. No. It can't be. Emily, a dissolved? Is that why they didn't let me see your body? Is that the reason for all the secrecy surrounding your death? Tell me what happens on those underground highways, Colin. The highways are very dark, and I don't want to go down there. They're too scary. There's no light, and they're full of ghosts. There are only shadows and voices down there. Everyone seems very sad and angry, and they tell me things I don't want to know. Things I don't even understand. At first, I hid the whole time, so they wouldn't find me. Or I wandered around by myself for hours in the dark, until I met Emily. Now I'm not so afraid of the underground highways, Michael, because she's always there. And what is this message you have to give me that's so important? She told me that she couldn't come back to be with us, that she will be trapped forever on the underground highways, and that the same thing will happen to me very soon. That's why she asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. She told me that you'd understand. We're connected, and it's very important for you to remember that. Connected? What does that mean, Colin? Emily told me there was a thread that no one can see that joins us to you, and that's why there's still a chance we can be saved, but that only you could do it while there's still time. She told me that if we're connected, there's still some hope for us all. Can you make everything go back to the way it was, Michael? I don't want to be stuck on the underground highways forever. Can you really make everything go back the way it was, Michael? We're connected? What does that mean? I don't understand anything. This is all crazy. Michael, help me. It hurts so much. Make it stop. Colin, what's happening? Make it stop. Please. way and let us do our job. No, don't go in there. I beg of you. My son. My son. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Damn it. I can't breathe. If it's true that there's a way to change all this, I have to find it now. I don't think I can stand it any longer. I don't think anyone can. Forget it. I'm not going back into that room. Poor Colin. His fate was sealed long before I woke up. Where could Rod and his wife be? Truth is, 
I'd rather not know the answer. It was the hiding place for Rod's gun. Now, inside this cookie box, there should only be a macabre aroma of gunpowder and vanilla. Hello, Mr. Sleepyhead. Have you come to help us? I don't know whether who I was before the Great Wave entitles me to make any kind of moral judgments, but what I do know is that the Hunter and his men are a real cancer in this new world, which is the only thing that really counts right now. The girl has a right to defend herself, that bastard said. So someone should give her the chance to do that. It's only fair, right? I can't get you out of here, Rose. I'm sorry. You're the only one that can do it. Thank you! As she was picking up the revolver, she gave me a look of determination that I didn't know she had in her. Rose acted so quickly that I barely saw what happened through the crack in the door of her van. Her hand was steady, even when the second man begged for his life, sobbing and groveling on the floor. The bullet went right through his heart. Blood splattered all over her white dress. And then she let the revolver drop and sat down, lost in her own world. And she didn't do or say anything else, holed up in her tiny, delirious inner landscape. There she had everything she could ever need, safe at last from the new world, which she will probably never return to. I'm afraid those bastards just played their last hand. I can't help but think those guys got what was coming to them, even if that's a thought worthy of the hunter. There's no point in bothering her. Fortunately for her, Rose isn't here anymore. Damn it. That's what happens when you bring electrical devices in contact with water. The contents of the water tank made it completely useless. It's Rose, sitting perfectly still and staring off into space. I'm afraid she's gone, and she's not coming back. Use this here? How? Let's see. The coins fit perfectly in the heads of the screws. It'll be no trouble loosening them and taking the fabric with me. Hmm, why would I want to cover a broken down generator? There's no point in bothering her. Fortunately for her, Rose isn't here anymore.
Hey, dude, back already? Nice to see you again around here. Your timing is perfect. So tell me, how did things go with the kid? Ruthless bastard. You called the cleanup brigades. Hey, hey, calm down, Mike. Tone it down, okay? Of course I called the cleanup brigades. What did you expect? I was curious about your interest in the boy, so I did a little investigating on my own. My informants poked around Rod's trailer a little, and they discovered some things. Enough to find out how great a risk that kid and his disease represented to camp safety. These are hard times, and we have to take care of each other, dude. It's our common responsibility. Besides, you already know what I think of those disease carriers, and the fools who protect them, Mike. We agreed that we'd do things my way. We agreed that no one would get hurt. No, dude. You're confused. I promised you I would do only what was strictly necessary to let you talk to the kid alone. And that's what I did. I made sure the soldiers gave you as much time as you needed to do whatever it was you had to do with that boy. Frankly, Mike, I don't understand why you're complaining. You gotta do what you gotta do, is that it? Of course, Mike. You gotta do what you gotta do. And that's something you already know better than anyone. But now, sit down and have a drink with me. We got things to celebrate. Thanks to the photo you brought us, the plan to get our hands on that fuel at the medical center has been finalized. That depot holds more gasoline than we could ever have imagined in our wildest dreams. We're going over there in a few hours. Hey, Michael, today is turning out to be a great day, don't you think? One of the best I can remember. No, I'm not gonna drink a toast with you because I don't have anything to celebrate. You're a despicable animal. Hey, watch what you're saying, dude. A pathetic, ignorant bastard. Garbage from the old world you were so happy to see swept away. Watch out, Mike. I warned you not to disrespect me in my bar, in front of my men. Don't keep tempting fate. <laughs> Are you really offended? You're a vile insect with no morals. So God and the devil were good to you, you say. Open your eyes and look around, you paranoid worm, because you're nothing but a violent, drunken, demented psychopath, just like your father. Turn off that music. Turn off that music right now! Listen, Michael. There's already been too much commotion in the refugee camp, and more trouble is not in my interest. That's the only thing stopping me from tearing you limb from limb right here and now, and stashing your remains in one of those drums out there. But another word, and you're a dead man. Got it? One more word out of you, and I swear that tomorrow morning they'll find your stinking corpse so tangled up in the barbed wire that they'll have to chop you up to get you out of there. And I don't care where you hide or how far you run, because you know I'll find you in the end. Now get out of my sight. Get out of my sight! This clandestine bar is now the lion's den. After our last conversation, if the hunter finds me inside, he won't hesitate to eliminate me on the spot. What the hell? Another one of those repeating images of those damn time loops. No. Rose. No, don't do it. No. It's Rose, killing her captors again. But there's something in this one that makes it different. It feels more real and more intense than the other times. Damn it, I wasn't able to save it. I can only cover half the generator with this. No, the water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? No, why would I want to take it?
after what happened. That room probably looks even gloomier and more sordid than before. I'm not going back in there. No, the water turned the generator into an enormous hunk of scrap metal. Why would I want to take it with me in this condition? Damn it. That's what happens when you bring the content. No, why would. No! Rose! No! Don't do it! No! First, I'll unplug the cables that connected to the trailer. I brought the generator you need, Chris. Great, Michael. I knew you could do it. Give me a few minutes to set up the computer and open the report. While Chris was getting everything ready, I decided to sit down in one of the armchairs in the office. I was exhausted. My mind had been trying to make sense of the last few hours of my life for what seemed like an eternity. The first hours following my bitter birth in this new world. But how could I judge the new world if I could barely remember the old one? The only thing I was sure of was that we had lost something very valuable along the way. The photograph of our life, overnight, had turned into a dark, blurry, sepia-tinted image. All of civilization had drowned under the great wave, and the only thing left on the beach or its remains. But no, I was fooling myself. I was already lost before the catastrophe. To tell the truth, all the other victims of the Great Wave had been luckier than me. They still dreamed of returning to their lives. Mine had already been broken a long time ago. Did I really stand a chance of recovering something I'd already lost forever? What type of strength, what type of miracle could ever give me that second chance? Michael, wake up! What's happening? The report, Michael. It's the report. I was going over it while you were sleeping. It's incredible. It's way beyond our expectations. You're gonna think I've gone crazy, but I don't even know where to start. How about at the beginning? Okay. It's the dead synchronicity point. The entire universe is changing, and we're going to witness it. We're going to be witnesses. And victims. Witnesses? Victims? But what the hell are you talking about? What is this dead synchronicity point? It's hard to explain. You're a photographer, so I'll try this analogy. Imagine a person's life chronicled in photographs. Up to now, and according to the rules that governed our universe, we were all subject to certain very specific temporal rules. Past, present, and future. That's all there was to it. So, the first thing we'd find would be a photo of the person as a newborn, then another on the person's sixth birthday, then another in college, and so on. Then we'd see photos of the person's wedding, children, old age, death. All in logical, linear, chronological order. Since our universe is conceived along a single line that starts in the past, makes a stopover in the present, and then projects into the future. Do you follow me? Yes, of course I follow you. Well, imagine now that this entire temporal architecture crumbles, falls apart, dissolves. Imagine that something or someone has altered the foundations of our universe, changing the rules of the game. 
forever annihilating our idea of time. The concepts of past, present, and future. I think you just lost me, Chris. Then let me continue with the metaphor of the photographs. Imagine now that a card dealer takes all these snapshots that sum up the life of this person, shuffles them, and places them in a stack in one spot on the card table. What would we have then? There would no longer be a chronological line, Michael. There would be no past, present, or future. Each of the individual events captured in these photographs, they would all be happening simultaneously, at the exact same point in time. And that point we would call... The dead synchronicity point! Exactly! Now our world is abandoning its old physical laws, and getting closer to that dead synchronicity point where time no longer exists. And therefore, all the phenomena and events that happened or will happen in the universe will start to be stacked on top of other ones, like the photographs in the dealer's deck. That sounds crazy. How credible do you think this report is? Completely, Michael. The dead synchronicity point is a fact. And the worst thing is that we're approaching it faster and faster. It'll only be a matter of days, at best maybe a few weeks, before the universe enters this new state. Time is ending, in every sense. And what does all this have to do with us? Come on, do you still not see it? This change in the architecture of the universe, this nullification of time, is the real origin of the Great Wave, the Dissolved, and the emergence of the New World. So, the Great Wave was caused by this approach to the dead synchronicity point? Yes, Michael. The Great Wave was the first manifestation of our universe's approach to the dead synchronicity point. That's why the catastrophe struck at the same time all over the planet. It wasn't just a local occurrence, it had global dimensions. It was the first clear and obvious sign that something was going wrong. And it brought chaos and misery to the world, as you've been seeing yourself since you woke up. What the hell do the Dissolved have to do with all this? According to the report, the Dissolved are still a big mystery. There isn't much information about them or their disease. What we do know is that they are people who are especially sensitive to the dead synchronicity point, and that is what's so tragic about them. Especially sensitive? Of course. This transformation, this radical and overwhelming change in the basic structure of the universe is totally incompatible with human life. We're condemned to die, Michael. Each and every one of us. That's terrible. How can you be so sure of that? If you think about it rationally, it's obvious. Our bodies are the product of hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, of a gradual and precarious adaptation to the environment, the universe, and its physical laws. Reaching the dead synchronicity point, the annihilation of time, we'd need another hundred thousand years to adapt to such a drastic change. And what do you think will happen to the human race? To each and every one of us when this process concludes, I'll tell you, our primary metabolism will go into a state of shock. Our entire cell structure will be jolted so profoundly and so violently that what we now call our bodies will lose all coherence, leaving behind just a brown puddle as evidence of our existence. We'll dissolve like those poor sick people. Indeed. According to the report, the dissolved are simply pioneers people who are ahead of their time, the vanguard of the human race in its final extinction. That's why some cases started cropping up so early, even before the Great Wave. Their illness was the harbinger of the enormous explosion that was to follow. It preceded it by hours, even days. And that's why the cases are multiplying exponentially as we get closer to the end. Do you understand? We'll all end up turning into dissolved. The last time we spoke, you told me that there could be a solution. A way to reverse all this madness. Yes, and that's the best part of the report. Theoretically, Michael, and paradoxical as it may sound, our progress toward the dead synchronicity point also brings the opportunity to change things. To turn the process around and return to where we were before our world collapsed. And how would that be possible? 
by penetrating the very center of the anomaly, the deepest nucleus of dead synchronicity, and arriving at the point where time is just starting to fold back into itself before the process is completed. If, inside the dead synchronicity point, each and every one of the events that have happened or will happen in the universe unfold, then surely it must be possible to gain access to the moment when something or someone triggered the catastrophe and stop it. I can't believe what I'm hearing. You're talking about time travel. Yes, I'm talking about the possibility of accessing the past to save our present and our future, of turning the great wave and all its consequences into a mere nightmare that never actually happened. The report talks about the hypothetical existence of a door leading into the very heart of the dead synchronicity point, a door to each and every one of the snapshots of the past, present, and future of our universe. And if, through that door, we had a chance to access the precise instant when everything went haywire, then we might be able to change things. Michael, that's what we've got to focus on in whatever time we have left. But I have to continue studying this report. I'm sure there are more answers in it. And you have got to help me. You're telling me that the dead synchronicity point is the origin of all this chaos? That our only chance of salvation is a theoretical journey to the past? Or sooner or later we'll all be obliterated? Like those poor dissolved? That's right, Michael. So we'd better get to work on it as soon as possible. By the way, the report also mentions another very interesting thing about the dissolved. What is it? It seems that in their trances, through their trips to the underground highways, the sick form a strange relationship with each other. It's as if the disease unites them, regardless of any physical distance that might separate them. The report is very unclear on this point, but it seems as if the dissolved are somehow linked, connected. My God, that can't be. Remember, please remember. Everything fits now. Everything makes sense. Please, enough. My head. Emily asked me to tell you that we're connected, Michael. We're connected. Michael, what's going on? Chris, get one of those tests ready, fast. But what for? You don't think that you're also? Do as I say. Okay. Give me your hand. It's positive. Michael, you're sick. You're a dissolved. No. That can't be. No. Michael, Michael, wake up. Emily? Emily, is that you? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. Is that really you? Where, where am I? Yes, Michael, it's me. You are on the underground highways.